Welcome to the GAC Weekly. Thanks for watching today as we are continuing our journey through the Great American Conference and getting to visit with folks from each of the 12 member schools. Our stop today is Shawnee and we get to visit with the play-by-play -play man for the Oklahoma Baptist Bison, Todd Miller. And uh, Todd, I just have to say first, it's always a privilege to get to visit with you. I have a lot of respect for you and for what you do. You're one of the best in the business at what you do. So thank you for taking a little time with us here today on the GAC Weekly. Well, thank you for the kind words, and it's always a, a pleasure to be with you too, Joey. Listen, I, you you look a little you look a little tanned. Are you tanned? Are you rested? You've had a little vacation time, and and I know you've had an opportunity to travel a little bit. Those things are important, even right now when it seems like we're not getting to do all the work that we need to do. I don't know that I'd say I'm tanned. It's a sunburn that's starting to peel. I think, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we did take a couple of weeks. Uh, went on a driving trip out to New Mexico and Arizona, and. Uh, got back just about the right period, right time because they started to shut things down again in New Mexico, and uh, it's a mess. But we had a great time, saw some great scenery. Uh, went to Santa Fe a couple of times, went to Albuquerque, went out to Sedona. We'd never been there. Uh, if you've never been there, I highly recommend it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous place, and, and got to leave a few golf balls uh, in the two-state area as well. <laughs> you know, I, and by the way, I did see you on the corner at Winslow, Arizona. I have taken a picture there as well. Uh, there was a truck that drove by, maybe not flatbed, and I will tell you that the woman did not slow down to take a look at me. Just have to, to for full disclosure on that on that sense. But uh, you know, the last time we so had what a you're saying is you really weren't a fine sight to see. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that much is true. That that much is is certainly true. My goodness, I wasn't ready for that. Thank you very much. Um, the last time that we had a chance to visit, the uh, the Bison men's basketball team was making a run to the tournament championship game uh, up in Bartlesville, and I would not have thought then that that'd be the last play-by-play uh, -play opportunity I would have the opportunity to do then for a few months and through the rest of the year. But listen, what a run it was, and I know that really that, that's the last sports we get to talk about, so at least... Tell us uh, about what it was then to get to call that game. And, and then the Bison went on to earn an at-large bid into the tournament, which they didn't get to do. But still, it was quite a run. You know, after we had lost to Henderson State in the championship game, Joey, I, I think maybe you had even said it. I know a lot of people there had told me that Man, you're going to get in as an at-large team. And I just wasn't certain. I mean, I did not know whether or not they would end up taking four teams from the Great American Conference. And, and rightfully, those four teams deserved to be there and ended up eventually getting – uh, the at-large bids, but it, it was really, really uh, a great time on Bison Hill. I mean, the enthusiasm for the basketball program now is is starting to get back where it once did. Um, you know, it's a, it's a storied basketball tradition school. Um, so just to see what Jason Aker has been able to accomplish in such a short period of time uh, is remarkable. And, uh, you know, they played so very well against Southern Nazarene. I mean, everything they did in the, in the semifinals was right. Seemed like about everything they did uh, in the finals was wrong. But, you know, you have to give Henderson <laughs> State a lot of credit. That was a really, really good basketball team. And, and Jimmy Elgis does a terrific job over there in Arkadelphia. Oh, no doubt. And, and it, was, it was a good tournament run for the Reddies, obviously, but I thought it was for the Bison as well. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, Todd. I was not one of the ones that thought that the Bison would make it in. I, I really didn't. I, I was concerned. I thought four teams would be – a challenge to get in, and I still owe Eric Moyer a Diet Coke uh, because <laughs> because of that. So uh, well, I'm glad you were wrong. I, I, know there were I know there were several people that had said, I think you're in uh -huh. good shape, and I, I just didn't leave Bartlesville feeling like we were in good shape because I always felt like they were going to take three from the league. Right. And I thought it was going to come down to us and Henderson State, and then when Henderson State got the automatic berth, I thought, well, you know, it's been a good run. But yeah. uh, OBU deserved to be in the field. I'm glad that they were in the field. I'm just sorry that the four teams from the conference didn't get a chance to go out and, and really show why this league during most of the year uh, was was the top rated division two conference in America. I, I, I agree entirely. And I was really happy that, to get to see that. I think it is a, a statement to be made for the GAC heading into year 10 as we're on the GAC weekly now speaking with Todd Miller from Oklahoma Baptist. We'll talk about year 10 in just a moment, Todd, but I did want to talk about what's happening there in Shawnee as well, you know, because even in a time like this, there's so many sports, so many, so many different avenues that you could be a part of the athletic department at Oklahoma Baptist. I'm, I'm sure there's always at least a little bit of something going on. 
Yeah, but it, believe it or not, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, I know a lot of the athletic administration offices were closed for, for quite some time. Um, they're since back in the office and, and, you know, starting to try to make some type of preparation for the fall season. There's been student athletes there that I believe have been working out uh, on their own. Um, football has a lot of high expectations. and A lot of those guys have, have stuck around, some of them, to uh, – to get better for their final year. But uh, there's so much, Joey, right now that's in question. I mean, I, it's such strange times that we're living in. Uh, you can go on any campus in America right now and it just doesn't quite feel like it would uh, just after the 4th of July. I mean, football season normally camps would be about three weeks away from starting. You don't know where the camps are gonna start in three weeks. So right. a, a lot of the preparation for the upcoming season right now has to be done by the individual athletes themselves. What does uh, someone like you do then during this time? I mean, I talked about you being a play-by-play -play man. I know that there are a lot of things going on. So so what does is, what is a play-by-play -play person on temporary hiatus do during a summer like this? Well, I hope it's temporary <laughs> the way it's going. I don't know if we're coming back till till next year, but you know, I just kind of hang out at the house. My wife and I take a lot of day trips. Uh, we mentioned that two week trip that we took uh, to New Mexico and Arizona, um, and just hanging out, hoping and praying that you know we can get back to work soon. Um, it's it's scary times for all of us, Joey. I mean, there's there's people that their sole income is based on being able to, to work in sports in some facet one way or the other, and, and they're not able to do it, and they don't know when they're going to be able to do it. So uh, you just bide the time the best you can. Uh, I've been watching golf on television. It's been nice to have a little bit of uh, uh, live sports back, but other than that, just kind of hanging out. I, I, I know that right now Oklahoma Baptist is scheduled to host uh, the All-State football game coming up on July 25th. And uh, I've, I've been contacted to do the play-by-play -play for Squirtle um, here in Oklahoma um, for that event. So I'll be gearing up for that here in the next week or so. Oh, well, good. Well, good. Well, I, I, I want to see a spotting chart in your hands. That's, I think, very important. Uh, definitely. I want, I want to see that happening. So I'll, I'll try to tune in for that. I, didn't, I was not aware that you'd be doing that broadcast. So I definitely, I'm, I'm interested now. I was interested anyway, but now it's, it's uh, the, the stakes have up just a little bit. Uh, Todd, the Bison were, were the final uh, team or final program, was the final program then to, to, to enter into the Great American Conference. And we were talking just a moment ago about something Sam Strasner had posted today. Uh, about this really being the, the birthday of the GAC is some uh, conference or the, the school presidents got together back on July 9th, back in 2010. The league is heading now into its 10th season. And I, like I said, I, I realize the OBU uh, completing then the, the picture as it is right now as the 12th member school to enter in. Talk about what you see about the Great American Conference coming in and then uh, the league right now, because I believe it, it has grown and continues to grow. I look at the Great American Conference, Joey, kind of in the sense that I do OBU's athletic journey in Division Two. Both in the snippet of time are very, very young. OBU has only been a full-time Division Two member for two years. You look at the success they've had in the conference, you look at the success they've been able to qualify teams for the NCAA tournament. And, it, you know, the life of a conference 10 years is not very long. Right. And you look at the way this, this league has grown from nine teams to 12 teams, uh, remarkable institutions in two states. Um, you look at the success on a national basis that the Great American Conference has had. It's remarkable in 10 years. I mean, you look at Washita and Harding, perennial football playoff entrance. Um, Harding had some deep runs in football. We mentioned basketball last year, getting four of eight teams in a regional tournament. Uh, baseball, Southern Arkansas, Oklahoma Baptist, Arkansas, Monticello have had really good postseason runs. I mean, that's just a, a handful of things that come to my mind. But you think in the snippet of time for a conference, 10 years to be able to get to that level, not only on a regional basis, but a national basis is phenomenal. And the, and the Great American Conference is playing in arguably the toughest region of the country, in the country. The central region with the Northern Sun, with the MIAA, um, Right. You know, in some sports, if you're able to get out of region play, 
uh, you got a very good chance to win a national championship. I mean, I look at volleyball. People exactly. say it's time for the the, the GAC to, to have some success. Well, you know what? You look at you look at the regional field, Joey, and and the teams in volleyball in the central region. Probably that's a better tournament than it is in the national level. So I, again, I think all that factored in. Uh, it's been a remarkable run for the league, and and I give kudos to to Will Pruitt and his staff for the job that they have done in leading this thing from uh, its infancy. Well, I, I just concur with you all the way around on that, and, and I, I congratulate the league, but I also you know have to, to give that credit also to Will and to, to his staff as well. Will does a fantastic job, and we appreciate him leading the way for the Great American Conference. Todd, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today, and I know that you're uh, even getting ready for a, a little bit more OBU broadcast over the course of the day. You, keeping things going there. Yeah, they, they've got me hooked up on this Zoom stuff, which I'm still not real comfortable <laughs> with. It. They, I mean, they tell me, look, they told me the first day I was in college, they said, Todd, you have a face for radio, stay there. <laughs> and you and OBU, they want to put GoPros on me, and they want to use Zoom and all that stuff. But no, I've been doing a series with all the coaches. Uh, we're still going through the spring. It's called Todd Talk. I didn't name it that. That's what they named it. But we visit with all the coaches and kind of catch up with them during their quarantine, talk about recruiting, talk about the season, how difficult it was in March to say, oh, by the way, you're done. You didn't think you were done yesterday, but you are. But it's been a lot of fun. It's uh, on Oklahoma Baptist University YouTube if anybody wants to catch it. Uh, again, it's called Todd Talk. And the coaches have been great. I've had a chance to interview some that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, deal with golf i don't deal with tennis a lot during the season so to have a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one and visit with the coaches and and uh, has been a lot of fun well keep it up and i appreciate that and todd, you know todd talk you like the alliteration and it's easy to remember too so uh, that definitely uh no problems there but you do a fantastic job you remember many many names left and right for years uh past and i'm sure for years to come todd miller play-by-play -play gentleman from Oklahoma Baptist University. Thank you for being with us today on the GAC Weekly. Thank you, bud. Always good to be with you, Joey. And I appreciate all of you all watching today. Please do subscribe to the channel. The YouTube channel is, of course, Midwest Sportsnet. It is the home of the GAC Weekly. For Todd Miller, I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you, and thank you for watching today.